As per an explosive new UK study, scientists in Britain have claimed that the virus was, yes, created in a lab in Wuhan and has no credible natural ancestor. British professor Angus Delegatia and also Norwegian scientist Dr. Berger Sorensen have claimed that uh, the virus was created by Chinese scientists who were working on a project in a Wuhan lab. According to the report, Chinese scientists took a natural coronavirus backbone found in Chinese cave bats, turned it then into the deadly COVID-19. This comes after U.S. President Joe Biden had also ordered the intel agencies in United States to submit a report on the origin of COVID-19 in the next three months. Biden has essentially directed agencies to report on whether the virus came from an animal source or from a lab accident. Here's a breakdown of all the proof against China that's leading to the speculation about coronavirus being lab created. First, Wuhan lab staff had COVID symptoms before the pandemic based on US Intel Agency's report. Now, China had destroyed initial human samples of the virus, which made it impossible for detailed investigations so far. Now, the third reason there is all of the speculation is because of an influenza outbreak in China back in December 2019 itself. Also, China's bid to uh, silence domestic medical voices who've raised questions about the origins of the virus has also led to speculation that they're hiding something. China initially also covered up the existence of the virus. They simply did not highlight it to the authorities globally and many questions have been raised about that as well. Access to Wuhan lab as well as information has been blocked time and again even for the WHO which has been trying to ensure fair investigation into the origins of this virus. Another reason is because of the fact that China has been unwilling to face an open and transparent global probe, something that other countries including the United States have raised, the need for China's cooperation. Now, this particular UK study has come at a time when US President Joe Biden has also tightened the news around China. Last week, he asked Intel agencies to probe the origins of COVID-19 virus and to submit his report within 90 days. In what comes also as a big setback for China, Biden further said that the United States will work with partner countries to press China to share information transparently. The Wuhan Institute of Virology is under the scanner. U.S. President Joe Biden has ordered U.S. intelligence agencies to probe the origins of the coronavirus and submit a report in 90 days. To collect and analyze information that could bring us closer to a definitive conclusion and to a report back to him in 90 days. The White House is under intense pressure after several senators asked Dr. Anthony Fauci to explain why the U.S. was funding research at Wuhan and whether COVID-19 was the result of the lab leak. Dr. Fauci, do you still support funding of the NIH funding of the lab in Wuhan? Senator Paul, with all due respect, you are enti entirely and completely incorrect that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain-of-function research in the Wuhan Institute Do they fund of virology. Dr. Recently, an intelligence assessment was reported in the U.S. media that put the focus on the Wuhan lab. An undisclosed U.S. intelligence report said three researchers working at the Wuhan lab sought hospital care in November 2019 before China disclosed the outbreak to the world. No, I'm not convinced. I think that we should continue to investigate what went on in China until we find out, to the best of our ability, exactly what happened. More than 590,000 Americans have so far lost their lives due to the coronavirus, which has claimed more than 34 lakh lives worldwide. Wuhan is in the eye of a storm because the Wuhan lab was carrying out extensive studies on bat viruses. The WHO team that visited the lab complained of China not sharing full data including raw samples, data and patient reports. China has been accused of deflecting investigations and recently told the WHO to probe the other countries. Through these field trips and in-depth visits, members of the mission unanimously agreed that delegation of lab 
leaking is extremely unlikely. Biden has also said that US will work with partner countries to press China to share information. Recently, 18 scientists from prestigious universities came together seeking a transparent, data-based, impartial and peer-reviewed investigation into the Wuhan lab. Bureau Report, India Today. And the politics over vaccines continues. The BJP now has alleged that there's been willful vaccine wastage in Rajasthan. BJP Sambit Patra has cited a media report to claim that vaccines are being dumped in vaccine centers in the state. He's claimed that as many as 500 vaccine vials with 2,500 jabs were thrown in dustbins in 35 vaccine centers in Rajasthan. While the Congress-ruled states have claimed a massive vaccine shortage, the BJP has accused them of serious vaccine wastage in hand. Uh, Devakur is joining us with more details on this. Dev, is there any truth to what the BJP is alleging here, that there's massive vaccine wastage and willfully at that at many of these centres? Well, clearly there is a lot of back and forth which has been going on as far as the question of vaccine wastage is concerned. The Rajasthan Sashok Hilo government has refuted and extremely strongly refuted the claims made by the BJP. It has mentioned that whatever vaccine wastage has happened is within the prescribed limits. It has mentioned that the vaccine wastage has been less than 10 per 10 percent. None of that has been willful. And whatever uh, BJP is doing is to, you know, uh, divert the attention from the fact that uh, most of the vaccination centers are shut as of now because there is not just enough vaccine available with the state government. The state government has time and again uh, asked the central government to provide vaccination so that people in the age group of 18 to 45 consider as possible uh, you know uh, spreaders of COVID-19 they can be vaccinated but the state government maintains that because of laxity and because of uh, ill preparation at the part of the central government it just does not have enough vaccine and the BJP by trying to proclaim that there is vaccine wastage going on uh, mm. it's trying to divert the attention also, the uh, the Congress claims that, you know, whatever vaccine wastage has happened is because of uh, uh, people not turning up in time earlier on. And uh, as of now, there is not much vaccine wastage that the BGP has been proclaiming. All right, Dave, thank you for those details. The Gelot government completely denying this allegation that there's been vaccine wastage and that's why there's a shortage in the state of vaccines. Now, we're seeing the number of coronavirus cases being reported across the country continuing to come down. And that's why in places like the national capital, where there's been a lockdown for over a month due to the second COVID wave, we're finally seeing steps being taken to unlock. As daily COVID case tally continues its downward trend, the ARP government has allowed the lifting of some curbs. They've allowed construction activities and the functioning of factories, giving much needed respite to daily wage earners in Delhi. These activities are allowed with certain COVID restrictions to ensure COVID appropriate behavior. The lockdown, however, is in effect. It will remain in force till June 7th, so the activities of people is largely restricted. Meanwhile, Delhi has reported 946 new cases in the last 24 hours with 78 fresh deaths. This is the first time that the case count has gone below the 1,000 mark since March 22nd. The capital's positivity rate has also gone down now to 1.25%. Chief Minister Kejriwal has warned that if cases start rising again, the unlock exercise will be halted. As COVID cases are showing a downward trend, you're seeing several states going ahead and starting their unlock process. The state of Madhya Pradesh currently has a partial lockdown in place, not a complete lockdown either because cases have come down in the state. What about Uttar Pradesh? Well, the Yogi government did announce certain relaxations in some districts. What that means is there is still a weekend curfew. There is still a night curfew. There will be no lockdown in districts with less than 600 cases. 
So in any district which has been identified to be doing well, there's been a relaxation. Delhi, the unlock is in progress. Uh, the Kejriwal government said it will happen in phases. The first phase starts today with construction activities being allowed. Maharashtra, there's a partial unlock. What this means is that the Uddhav Thakre government has said that district-wise, based on how they're doing in the fight against coronavirus, there will be an unlock. So in parts like Mumbai also, uh, because cases are coming down, there has been unlock happening in phases. In Jammu and Kashmir, there's a partial unlock happening. Again, based on how districts are doing, the administration is taking a call then and there about whether they can afford to go ahead and unlock these areas. Again, it's only phase-wise. Rajasthan, the lockdown has been extended till June 8th. Again, this is a partial lockdown according to the administration, not a complete one. So some activities are still allowed in the state. But considering that in rural parts of Rajasthan, cases are going up, in those districts, there will be a lockdown even now. And in the state of Maharashtra, there has been a rise in COVID cases in rural areas, and that's why the state government has extended the lockdown in the state till June 15th, while also stating that districts which have seen a dip in cases will see an ease in restrictions. Chief Minister Udav Thakre in a review meet also pointed out that cities, including Mumbai and districts with less than 10% positivity rate and an occupancy of oxygen beds of less than 40%, will find lockdown norms being relaxed. Essential shops will now be open from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Delivery of non-essential items via e-commerce platforms will be permitted. Udhav Thakre also warned people against letting their guard down as COVID-19 cases are still high in a few districts. Maharashtra has reported 18,600 new cases and 402 deaths in the last 24 hours. Udhav also brought up the prediction of a third wave and said it will depend on people's behavior to keep the virus at bay. And let's focus on the political face-off that's once again playing out in the state of Bengal. India today has learned from sources that the Bengal Chief Secretary, Alapan Bandhupadhyay, is unlikely to join North Block in Delhi today. There's been a directive from the centre and he's likely to defy that and instead join Mamta Banerjee at the State Secretariat in Nabana. If sources are to be believed, Alapan may get a role in the TMC government. He was recalled, interestingly, hours after controversy erupted over Mamta skipping Prime Minister Modi's review meet on Cyclone Yas. Earlier, the Bengal government had asked for a three-month extension for the Chief Secretary, which the centre had also given the go-ahead and cleared. And Mamta Banerjee is not directly intervened, writing to Prime Minister Modi over Chief Secretary Alapan Bandhupadhyay's transfer. She says, and I quote in her letter, shocked and stunned by the centre's unilateral order. The centre's order is legally untenable and unconstitutional. Remember that the Mamta government has been maintaining that the state government wasn't consulted, as is the norm, before this kind of a decision was taken by the centre. Sources, meanwhile, have told us that the centre is likely to initiate disciplinary action against the Bengal chief secretary if he does not report to Delhi. And he has not done that so far. Far. So the centre at this point could take action against him, even as Mamta Banerjee has also stepped into the fray. She's written to Prime Minister Modi saying that this kind of action is untenable, it's unconstitutional. Indrajit Kundu is joining us with more details on this. Indrajit, things are quickly escalating from both sides. Just give us first the details of what Mamta Banerjee has said in her letter to the Prime Minister. Well, uh, this is on expected lines, Akshita. Uh, you know, uh, yesterday we had said, uh, sources were telling us that uh, Alapan Bandhapadhyay will not be reporting to North Block today. Uh, the time, of course, was 10 o'clock this morning. And uh, we were also given to understand that Alapan Bandhapadhyay may be attending a crucial uh, meeting to review the pandemic situation here at the State Secretariat at 3, uh, 3 o'clock that had been called by uh, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee. And uh, it seems that is going to be the case because Mamta Banerjee has just... Uh, written a letter to the Prime Minister, of course, calling this entire move unprecedented. And what she also goes on to state is that just a few uh, weeks prior to this development, there was consultation that took place between the state government and the central government, where the state government has sought an extension 
for Alapan Bandhapadhyay. As we have been saying, Alapan Bandhapadhyay superannuates today. Uh, he is officially supposed to retire today. His tenure comes to an end today. However, the state government had wanted uh, a three-month extension because Alapan Bandhapadhyay, the chief secretary, is also the head of the task force uh, that has been formed by the West Bengal government to manage COVID in the state. And therefore, keeping in mind the pandemic situation, the state had asked for three months uh, extension for Alapan Bandhapadhyay, hmm. and that had been granted by the central government. So Mamta Banerjee writes that only a few days back, on my request, you had kindly allowed and the government of India had issued an order to extend uh, his services for three months as Chief Secretary beyond 31st May 2021 for the purpose that he could serve the state severely affected by the second wave of pandemic of COVID-19 mm. uh, in critical times, which has further been devastated by an extremely severe cyclone. I presume that said order of 24th May 2021 granting extension as chief secretary issued after mutual written consultation and on the basis of the reasons deliberated upon during such consultation in accordance with due process stands and ought to stand in any case mm. in this regard i seek your kind confirmation in public interest and in the larger interest of the people of the state of west bengal in these difficult times then she goes on to elaborate the all india service uh, themselves laws and how it is uh, important uh, for such transfers that there is a consultation between the state government and the central government whenever an officer from the state cadre is moved to central deputation. And she says that hasn't taken place in this case. And therefore, the West Bengal government, of course, calling this uh, order of the central government as unilateral and unprecedented. And Mamta Banerjee ends the letter saying uh, that I sincerely look forward to an earnest federal cooperation in this green times. Uh, okay. In the spirit which I had uh, flown to Kalai Kunda to see you on 28th uh, May of 2021. She puts a reference of the Kalai Kunda meeting and she mm. says that the federal structure will be uh, honoured by the central. Okay, this is very, very interesting. Mamta Banerjee is saying that the centre had given the nod for an extension of the Chief Secretary's term for three months, which means till August he was set to be in Bengal. She said that that's why he cannot be moved right now or transferred. This even as the centre, sources tell us, will take strict action against the Chief Secretary, Alapan Bandhupadhyay, for not reporting to the North Block as expected today. Indraji, thank you for all those details. Now, the variant of the novel coronavirus B1617 sequenced in India is spreading globally. India's top scientists have predicted how this variant will dominate the world. Unfortunately, this variant with a higher transmissibility is spreading across the world and has been seen in different countries. Now, Sneha Mordani gets you all the details you need to know about this COVID variant. <laughs> Sequenced in India, but not necessarily an Indian variant, says India. Nevertheless, B.1.617, a variant of concern first found in India, is well on its way to dominate the globe. India had warned against it. Is this the most dominant variant in the country right now? Yes, by and large, it is either already the most dominant in state by state, or it is rising. Uh, given its advantage over the other variants in terms of being able to replace them because of high transmissibility, it will be a relatively safe guess to say that in time to come, this will be the dominant strain wherever it is not already. Pakistan has cases. Vietnam too has reported this variant. Victoria in Australia is getting locked down because of it. The list of countries affected by this variant is endless. The World Health Organization says, all in all, more than 53 countries have reported cases of this variant. The World Health Organization is also tracking four variants of concern in totality, which are often referred to by the country in which they emerged, a practice that India, among other countries, oppose. A virus does not necessarily respect them as long as people are moving. And the reason we are choosing not to say Indian variant is a correct one. The country that sequences a particular variant is not necessarily the place of origin. Okay. I mean, the B117 could have been originated somewhere outside UK and could have been sequenced first in UK. One does not know. 
In fact, even the Spanish flu never originated in Spain. It probably started in China somewhere over that more than 100 years ago. One thing I can guarantee you, 617.2 is going to spread all over the globe, just like B.1.1.7 <laughs> spread all over the globe. But as they say, what's in a name? The fact is that this variant has got the world worried. It is a variant of concern. Now to be classified as a variant of concern, it must pose a risk to public health over and above the original Wuhan virus. This could be due to changes in transmissibility, disease severity, its ability to evade detection by viral diagnostic test, reduced effectiveness of treatments, or an ability to evade natural or vaccine-induced immunity. The WHO is tracking four other variants of concern which are often referred to by the country in which they emerged. The B.617 viruses are divided in three lineages. It's B.1.617.1, B.1.617.2 and B.1.617.3 of which B.1.617.2 has the highest transmissibility and reduced neutralization. So as you might be aware, B.1.617 is now B.1.617.1.2 and .3. Of these three, .2, 617.2 is the one that is rising the fastest it has the highest transmissibility. By transmissibility, we mean how many people will one infected person infect. Mm. And you've all already seen that now entire families get infected compared to earlier. So 617.2 is more transmissible than other variants. And severity, however, does not so far appear to be clearly greater. We think that simply a very, very large number of people got infected which is why we saw a total number of severe cases also going up. Now, as the numbers are coming down, the average severity does not seem to be any greater than it has been in the past. Will vaccines work against the B.1.617 variant? A recent UK study has found that the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine was 88% effective against this variant two weeks after the second dose. Two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine were also 66% effective against this variant. Experts say it is important for vaccination to continue. The idea is to ensure that maximum amount of inoculations happen while there are low levels of virus circulating so that the new variants do not emerge that and subvert the vaccines. The higher the levels of virus in the population, the more likely it is that a vaccine evasive variant will emerge. In New Delhi, Sneha Murdani for India Today. Let's get you now a ground report from Tamil Nadu. The annual summer flower festival in Yerkod has been forced to shut for the second consecutive year due to coronavirus. And this lockdown has given a huge blow to the tourism business, supporting 67 villages in Salem. Nabila Jamal gets you the details. vaccine secure your life this message written with flowers at your cords anna park did not see the light of day as their much awaited flower show was cancelled for the second year in a row the flowers were in full bloom until two weeks ago when the three-day summer show was due to be held the horticulture department had made all efforts to make the 45th flower show a stellar one after last year's lull Unfortunately, this year too, the show was called off at the last moment, leading to large chunks of exotic flowers withering away without an audience. For the flower show, we have to uh, do the work, start the work from the month of December, January. Okay. We have started. Okay. We have started uh, sowing the seeds, uh, okay. sowing the flower seeds in flea field pots uh, okay. and uh, planting the dahlia plants. At least 10,000 flower pots were kept ready. 2,000 lilium plants were brought in from Uti, 4,000 dahlia plants from Kolkata, and 675 varieties of roses from Bengaluru were planted in these gardens to mark the grand show. 
but months of preparations fell flat due to the sudden COVID surge. Uh, pandemic uh, we didn't uh, didn't expect. Unfortunately, pandemic pandemic came, mm. so that um, we are unable to conduct the show. Mm. Uh, the these flowers now start withering. Mm. Uh, we we used to get uh, some two lakh people mm. to this, mm. and we get some twenty lakh rupees uh, for the this trip to the government. Okay. What's tragic is that the entire town of Yerkod feeds on tourism through the year. 67 villages around Yerkod depend on visitors thronging the stunning location. The lockdown brought them to their knees. This place, Yerkod, for people around the districts here and neighboring states, is a spot of gold. At least two lakh odd visitors that come by around the summer months to just take a good look at the botanical gardens, the deer park, enjoy the boat rides. It's very unfortunate that for the last two years, tourism here has come to a grinding halt. The lockdown not only wiped away business for this town, but also cut off access to food. Villagers struggle to get hold of groceries and daily essentials as Yerkod is located on a hilltop. Naria restaurant and the restaurant and be Naria people work in restaurant live with Pundranga. The horticulture department stepped in to provide some relief to villagers, providing them with essentials on a regular basis. But nothing can truly compensate for their losses two years in a row. The flower formation here reads, take vaccines, secure your life. This was the lovely message that was due to welcome lakhs of visitors into these botanical gardens in Yerkad. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 induced lockdown, this year too, the horticulture department's efforts has died a slow death. Many of the flowers have withered away, many more are still in full bloom, but we're only hoping that the moment of gloom doesn't carry forward any longer because there are over 500 families that are supported through the tourism right here we're hoping that it's back in action by next year. With camera person Pavan Kumar, Nabila Jamal for India Today, Air Card, Salem. Another story we're tracking closely this morning is on the Delhi High Court, which will be delivering its verdict in their crucial case on the construction of the Central Vista project. A bench of Chief Justice D.N. Patel and Justice Jyoti Singh will be delivering the judgment after a plea was filed to suspend the ongoing construction work during the pandemic. The plea stated that the project was not an essential activity and should be stopped. Now, the plea termed this Vista project as the central fortress of death and compared it to Auschwitz, uh, a German concentration camp during World War II. Earlier, a plea in the Supreme Court to stop the construction was dismissed by the Appeals Court. It was, however, on very different grounds. The Central Vista project includes the construction of a new parliament complex, uh, a new residence for the Prime Minister and the Vice President of India, a central secretariat and several other buildings. <laughs> Another big development that's expected in the courts today is in the Supreme Court, which will be hearing a plea seeking cancellation of Class 12 board exams. 75 students of Class 12 have filed this petition seeking directions to the central government, to the CBSE board and ICSC to cancel the exams in view of the pandemic. On Friday, while hearing this petition, the Supreme Court asked students to remain optimistic, saying that some solution will be in their favour when the court takes up the matter next. Now, the court had also sought the response of the centre, the CBSE and the ICSE boards on this petition. Remember that the centre, meanwhile, is likely to announce its decision on the board exams tomorrow and had asked states to submit their detailed suggestions as well on this issue. Here are the solutions proposed by the CBSE to go ahead and hold the exams amid this pandemic. Let's break them down for you. The first option given by the CBSE is to go ahead and write these exams at designated centres and that it will be restricted only to major subjects, only to 19 identified major subjects. Performance-based assessment will happen for the other subjects, for what's been identified as the minor subjects. This is one option mooted by the CBSE. What's the second option? 
they will ensure that the duration will be cut short of these exams, that it will be written at the student's schools itself, and that the written exam will be for one language and for three selective subjects. Again, it will be a performance-based assessment for the other subjects that have been identified as minor subjects. And there will be no chance for those who miss out on the exams due to COVID. That leads to a big question mark. Another uh, point that the CBSC has made here is that there will be no printed question papers. Breaking news coming in from Kerala where the Chief Minister Pinera Vijayan has presented a resolution in connection with the ongoing unrest in Lakshadweep. He submitted this resolution in the Kerala Legislative Assembly. Pinera Vijayan has said that people are raising concerns and that there are attempts to encroach upon the cultural and specific features of Lakshadweep. Uh, Pinera Vijayan demanded a resolution to the concerns of the people of this island so that resolution has now been moved remember that the ldf and the udf both have been raising concerns over this draft that's been made in lakshadi this resolution draft and that's why it's been brought up now in the kerala assembly and on the other side of a short break here on india's agenda we'll get you the latest updates with regards to the mehul choksi hunt a big India Today expose coming your way that shows how the fugitive BNB scam accused could have forged papers to escape to Dominica from Antigua with his girlfriend. Remember, do mask on before you move on. Don't forget. Remember, do mask on before you move on. Don't forget. Keep watching India Today. Remember, do mask on before you move on. Don't forget. Remember, do mask on before you move on. Don't forget. A recent study published in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology has revealed that vaccine-induced immune responses were significantly greater than the response to natural infection and immune transfer to neonates occurred via placenta and breast milk. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists have also recommended that COVID-19 vaccine should not be withheld from pregnant or breastfeeding individuals. The vaccine is not a live virus vaccine. The mRNA present in the vaccine degrades quickly and can't interfere with cell functions. Pregnant women may receive the vaccine if they are at high risk of exposure to COVID-19 virus are very likely to be in contact with people with COVID-19. The vaccines currently being used in India are not recommended by the Indian health authorities for pregnant women. Trials have not been done in India for pregnant women. 
and that's one of the reasons why the government has said there is no data to show that this vaccine is safe as far as administering them on pregnant women is concerned. There are recommendations from the National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization, which is a technical group on immunization, which says that pregnant women should get the choice of using the shot against COVID-19, of getting the shot against COVID-19. But the government of India has not allowed vaccinations in pregnant women just yet. And what comes as a huge boost for the centre? The Delhi High Court has dismissed the plea seeking a stay on the construction of the Central Vista project. The Delhi High Court says that since the construction workers are residing on site, there's no question of a stay on construction. The Delhi High Court says that this petition lacks bona fide and hence has quashed this plea. So there's going to be no stay on the Central Vista project. The construction can go on as scheduled. Remember that the petition had stated that this is a threat, that there could be a spread of COVID-19 between the workers involved in the project. The Delhi High Court has dismissed it. However, Anisha Mathur is joining us with more details on this. Anisha, just tell us really what has been mentioned in the judgment by the Delhi High Court. That the High Court bench of Chief Justice D.N. Patel and Justice Jyoti Singh has dismissed this petition. In fact, has imposed a one lakh rupee fine on the petitioners, claiming that, uh, by holding that this is a motivated petition, that this uh, petition lacked bona fide. In fact, the court has taken note of the affidavit filed by the centre and the SP group, the Shapoji Palonji group, which had claimed that all construction workers are in fact staying on site and all COVID protocols protocols including masking, distancing, medical facilities, thermal scanning etc is being uh, is being followed and that is why the court has said that this uh, pro there is no need to stay the project. In fact, they have also said that this is a project of national importance. It is a vitally public, uh, it is a vital public importance and therefore there is no question of uh, stay on construction in <coughs> In addition, they've also noted that the construction deadline for this particular ongoing project, which is the parliament and the uh, Vijay Chowk area, is uh, for uh, November 2021 because the parliament, as the government had claimed, the parliament needs to uh, also be ready for use for, for the session, for the next session. And that is why the court has said that there is no question of stay on this. In fact, has called it a motivated petition and imposed a one lakh rupee fine. Back to you. All right. So the big breaking news that's coming in the Delhi High Court, not just dismissing that petition, but also levying a one lakh rupee fine on the petitioner saying that this is a motivated plea that was filed in the court saying that there's absolutely no basis for them to go ahead and seek a stay, considering that the workers for this project were res residing on site. Now, after Antigua claimed that the PNB scam accused Mehul Choksi fled with his girlfriend to Dominica, India today dug deeper into how Choksi really got into the Caribbean nation after going missing from Antigua last week. India today has exclu exclusively spoken to the owner of Cobra Tour Services in Dominica, who denied having facilitated illegal entry to anyone into the island nation. He also rubbished the reports of Mehul Choksi availing his services, saying he's never seen him. He's never met him. He said that the two who travelled to Dominica recently and availed services of the travel firm were a UK national of Indian descent and an Indian national. However, there are discrepancies in the two documents that India Today has accessed. While Cobra Tours mentions an Indian and a UK national, the company that provided the boat, which is Hackshaw Boat uh, Charters Limited, states that the two are UK nationals, that there's no Indian national. The passengers were two, uh, two guys, one Indian, uh, in my knowledge of race, racial appearance. And then we had three crew members also on this boat. 
So, so they will fight. Could you that, Andrew, could you repeat that again? One international and a UK, a UK citizen, but in my racial opinion of looks, they both look like Indian guys. They were both male? They were both male. And okay. then we had three other male who were crew of the boat. Okay, and nobody else. And nobody else. In terms of the photograph, uh, seems to have a, a photograph of a man and a woman traveling on uh, the boat Calliope of Arn, and uh, not two men. Also, did you get a chance to meet the Indians who traveled or who availed your services? Did any of them look like Mehul Choksi? Well, honestly, I do not know. Apart from the photos that are circulating, I do not know what Mehul Choksi look, look like. But based on the photos that are circulating, I did not see anybody of that um, look on this particular boat, or, or not, not the boat or anybody that we did clearances for. Nevertheless, this boat that came in did not have any woman on board. Okay. The and boat um, that we did the clearances for did not have any woman on board. There were two, two men yeah. who were uh, UK and Indian descent, and then the free crew members. But uh, there were no, absolutely no woman on that particular boat. Let's take this across now to Geeta Mohan for more details. Uh, Geeta, you know, we just played out the conversation that you also had with that official who says that, you know, there were two men on board the boat. And all of this leads to a lot more questions about exactly what happened, how Mehul Choksi really went from Antigua to Dominica. Well, that's right. This is a, this is an intrigue and a myst mysterious story uh, that will unravel itself, Akshita. But it is very clear that there is some sort of forgery involved over here uh, because we have documents of the same said individuals who had traveled 45 days ago to the Caribbean. Uh, they were in St. Lucia, were traveling to Dominica, were not allowed entry because they had to quarantine. They went back to St. Lucia according to uh, the then uh, tours and services that they had hired, and uh, from there they flew out. Uh, they were both UK nationals, according to the papers. And now we're looking at new papers like Cobra Tours, which says uh, the same name, but the nationality has changed. So there is a huge problem over here of somebody having used uh, documents, forged documents of people who had already traveled to the Caribbean and in all probability were not the ones who were traveling uh, to the Caribbean, or if they were the ones traveling in the, on this boat, then Mehul Choksi certainly uh, entered uh, through another route uh, on a different boat. And mm. if that's the case, there's a massive confusion over here. We'll have to wait and see how the Dominican authorities cleared documents that have been forged. Uh, there is certainly a lot of questions with regards to whether if Mehul Choksi entered illegally. There are two contentions, Akshita. One, Mm. is that of the uh, government authorities of Dominica and Antigua that he entered illegally into Dominica. And the second one is of Mehul Choksi that he was forced. Either way, his name does not appear on record on any of the travel documents. And that certainly uh, brings to question or, or the, 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 the issue of forgery over here. Right. Whether he forged documents and entered Dominica or whether if he's abducted forged documents to ensure that he stays uh, under the radar. You know, more, more questions than answers that we have right now. Perhaps as the investigation progresses, we'll have more details of exactly how Choksi managed to really enter Dominica. Did he forge documents or not? Which route did he take? Well, at this point, there's no end to the trouble for Mehul Choksi because Antigua and Barbuda Prime Minister Gaston Brown has now claimed that Mehul Choksi left Antigua with his girlfriend, but that he was caught in Dominica. India Today TV has also accessed some photographs, which I'm sure you've seen by now, where Choksi is behind bars and is showing injury marks that he sustained on his body. Munish Pandey gets you the latest. Trouble mounts for fugitive businessman Mehul Choksi lodged in a Dominican jail. On Saturday, the first images of the diamond tear surfaced from behind the jail. A bruised Choksi could be seen with a red eye and lacerations on his arm. A pale shadow of his earlier self,
Choksi appeared visibly thin and almost dazed behind bars. The PNB scam accused's lawyer alleged that he was abducted from Antigua and forcibly taken to Dominica and was badly beaten up. A claim denied by the Antiguan police chief. So we have no information, we have no evidence that he was forcefully removed from Antigua. And even in the assertion made by the attorney, there is no such truth to that that any police force in Antigua was involved in that. We had no involvement in any movement of him from Antigua to Dominica or wherever he left him. Antigua PM Gaston Brown, however, claimed that Choksi was on a pleasure trip to Dominica with his girlfriend, but was captured there. He even claimed that Choksi has been bribing Antiguan opposition to cut a deal for freedom. The Dominican government has a free hand to act. In fact, Mihal, Mihal Choksi may have made a mistake to travel to Dominica. Mm -hmm. uh, the information that we're getting now is that he may have taken his girlfriend to Dominica uh, probably to dinner to have a good time and so on, and got caught. What is happening here, you know, is that they are literally defending the campaign money. <laughs> so here's a situation in which um, Choksi had the best law firm representing him, but some UPP um, individuals befriended him, started to take money from him, small contributions, and he promised them big contributions um, since they told him that they will get um, their UPP um, lawyers to get him off the hook and that if they win the next general elections, that they will protect him. Now an Indian plane awaits for Choksi in Dominica, with documents from Indian courts to confirm that Choksi is a fugitive, which may lead to his deportation to India. I can confirm that there is a jet there. My understanding is that the Indian government has sent certain um, documentation from the courts in India to confirm um, that, you know, Mr. Choksi is indeed a fugitive. And my understanding, the documentation this will be utilized in the injury. court case that will be heard or the, the court hearing uh, next Wednesday. But opposition leader in Antigua slammed his government for requesting direct extradition of Mihil Choksi to India, claiming that Choksi is a citizen of Antigua. The fact is, the process started here in Antigua, quite rightly, with a request from the Indian government. Mr. Choksi isn't just or wasn't just located in Antigua. He's a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda. How can you send someone to a country where they have no citizenship and no right to reside? It has to be Antigua and Barbuda because he's not a citizen of India. This is a golden opportunity for India to bring back Mihul Choksi because if he goes back to Antigua, then the extradition proceeding will take years to get over. While Mihul Choksi is using the alleged torture marks on his body to avoid coming back to India, the Indian authorities, according to sources, are already in Dominica to convince the authorities and court there that he is a mastermind of a very serious crime and he should be deported back to India as soon as possible. With Gita Mohan, this is Munish Pandey in Delhi for India Today. Now, with all that's happened, here's what's likely to happen next with Mehul Choksi. A couple of possibilities that we're listing out here. Possibility one is that Choksi is sent back to Antigua by the Dominican court. Remember that a hearing is underway with regards to him being sent back from Dominica. Possibility two is that he is directly deported to India from Dominica by the court and not sent to Antigua. Remember that Antigua so far has said that he can be deported without any issues directly to India. Possibility three is that Choksi can go ahead and prolong this legally to duck deportation. And he can take this and drag this on for months together. The next possibility is that he can again use delaying tactics by claiming abduction using his alleged injury marks to claim that he was tortured and abducted to Dominica. But from these possibilities, you can clearly make out that it's only a question of delaying for Mehul Choksi.
trouble is mounting for star wrestler turned murder accused Sushil Kumar. The Delhi police is likely to slap the Makoka, the stringent law, on arrested Olympic medalist Sushil Kumar over his involvement with dreaded gangsters of Delhi, of Haryana and Rajasthan. Once imposed, it will be difficult for Sushil Kumar to go get bail uh, and he may even have to serve a life imprisonment sentence. Under the stringent law, police get six months to also file a charge sheet. According to the Delhi police, Sushil Kumar was in touch with gangsters Kala Jatedi as well as Neeraj Bhavana. During the murder of Sagar Rana, another wrestler, Sushil also beat up the nephew of gangster Kala Jatedi. This led to a rift between Kala Jatedi and Sushil Kumar. The Delhi police sources also say that gangster Neeraj Bhavana's henchmen are suspected to have accompanied Sushil Kumar on the day of that brawl on May 4th. Meanwhile, the crime branch has taken the wrestler to Haridwar now in search of more evidence. Remember that after the brawl that happened on May 4th, Sushil had fled to Haridwar and disposed of his mobile phone. According to sources, Sushil at this point is not cooperating with the investigation and saying that he didn't intend to kill Sagar Rana. The police and the crime branch is now looking at getting his phone. And what comes as more trouble for Sushil Kumar, a shopkeeper has spoken out, alleging that he was thrashed by the Olympian when he approached him to get his dues. The shopkeepers claimed that he had supplied ration worth 4 lakh rupees to Delhi's Chhattisal Stadium, where Sushil Kumar trained. He said that when he asked for his dues, he was first beaten up by Sushil and then by his accomplices. <laughs> एक दिन सुवेरे सुवेरे मेरे पास धर्मा का फोन आया कि सुशील जी बुला रहे हैं आज तेरे को पैसे मिल जाएंगे मैं घर से नाश्ता ही कर रहा था मैं उसके दौरान उठ के गया तो धर्म वहां सुशील खड़ा था और 40 50 पहलवान और खड़े थे तो धर्मा कहता जी आ गया जी राशन वाले जी सतीश जी तो वो कहता तू यहां क्यों आया सुशील कुमार जी सुशील कुमार जी बोले तू यहां क्यों आया वीरेंद्र से जाके पैसे मांग वीरेंद्र ने राशन लिया होगा वीरेंद्र से जाके मैं मांग मैंने थोड़ा ना मंगाया मैं सर मेन हेड तो आप हो वो तो ट्रांसफर हो गए पैसे तो बच्चों ने इकट्ठे करके देने हैं ना आपने देने हैं अब अशोक जी देंगे मैं तो मर जाऊंगा नहीं तो मैं इतने पैसे मैं बहुत छोटा दुकानदार हूं मैं कहां से लाऊंगा कहता अच्छा मरेगा छूटते मेरे सुशील कुमार जी ने दो तीन हाथ दिए जैसे उन्होंने हाथ दिए ऐसे सारे जो 30 40 पहलवान वहां 50 खड़े थे सबने मारना शुरू कर दिया मेरे को तो फुटबॉल बना दिया मैं तो एक हफ्ते तक तो घर से उठ नहीं पाया कि इस गम में कि मेरे साथ हुआ क्या है मैंने अपने राशन के पैसे लेने हैं और पहलवानों से मैं पिट के आ रहा हूं सबसे पहला हाथ सुशील ने मारा था मेरे सुशील कुमार जो पहलवान है जिनको आज फंसे हुए हैं आज जो फंसे हुए हैं and with that story it's a wrap in this edition of india's agenda that's it from me thank you very much for watching as always for all the top headlines of the day you can log on to our website indiatoday.in you can also download the india today app have a great day and a great week ahead keep watching india today and just a reminder, mask on before you move on. The government of India has allowed lactating women to take a shot against COVID-19. The World Health Organization says that lactating women can take a shot against COVID-19. The WHO has recommended that breastfeeding women can be vaccinated and can continue breastfeeding after vaccination. Currently, there is no data on the safety of the vaccines in breastfeeding women or on the effects of the mRNA vaccines on breastfed infant or milk production or excretion. However, early studies have demonstrated that secretion of antibodies in breast milk can protect the breastfed baby. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, which is the CDC USA, has said that COVID-19 vaccines are non-replicating vaccines. They can produce immune responses, but do not reproduce inside host cells. But pregnant women, as far as India is concerned, are still not allowed the vaccine. Pregnant women make up 5% of India's total population. 
Soumya Swaminathan, chief scientist at the World Health Organization, has said that globally it has been observed that pregnant women are at a higher risk of complications and that of premature birth because they already have a low respiratory reserve and therefore vaccinating them is perhaps the best option available. To remember, mask on before you move on. Don't forget. For more news and updates, Keep watching India Today. And just a reminder, mask on before you move on. Remember, mask on before you move on. Don't forget. The all new India Today mobile app. Get quick and short news flashes. Watch TV news channels live. Read stories without data connection. Personalize your feed and notifications. Watch a bulletin of your favorite journalist. Lighter and faster. India Today mobile app. Remember, do mask on before you move on. Don't forget. You are watching India Today. Thanks for being with us on India Today. I'm Chaiti Narula getting you all the top stories. Let's start off with the headlines first. <laughs> Delhi High Court quashes plea challenging construction work of Central Vista project. Court says that plea is motivated and imposes a fine of 1 lakh rupees on the petitioner. <laughs> Mamta shoots a scathing letter to Prime Minister Modi over the transfer of top Bengali. Babu says that she... Uh, won't release Chief Secretary Alapan Bandupadhyay, centre likely to initiate action against him. Day before the crucial announcement by CBSE on Class 12 board examinations, Supreme Court to hear plea seeking cancellation of the examinations. COVID cases decreased to lowest in 50 days, 1.52 cases in 24 days. Recoveries rise to nearly 92%. An explosive study nails China's role behind the COVID pandemic. The new research gives proof that virus was made in a Wuhan lab and it has no natural ancestor. Big India Today expose shows... Fugitive PNB scam accused Mehul Choksi could have forged papers to escape Dominica with girlfriend. To our top story, Delhi High Court delivered its judgment on the petition seeking a halt on the construction activity 
for Central Vista project. Washing the plea, Delhi High Court stated that since construction workers are residing on site, there is no question to stay on the project construction. The High Court stated that the project is an essential one with national importance and cannot be seen in isolation. The court also observed that the legality of the project has been upheld, calling the petition motivated. The High Court also imposed a fine of 1 lakh rupees on the petitioner. The Central Vista project includes construction of a new parliament complex, Prime Minister and Vice President's residences, a central secretariat and several other buildings. Anisha Mathur now joins us for the latest. Anisha, can you, if you could walk our viewers through all that transpired in the court. Essentially, it means that uh, the construction can go on. Oh, yes, Shati, there was never a stay on this construction. Remember, for the last month as the matter was pending in the court, the court had so far refused to put any interim stay while they were hearing it. And today they have very categorically said that there is no question of passing any such orders. They've taken note of the centre and the affidavit filed by the SP group where they have said that all construction work residing on site. All of the COVID protocols, including masking, sanitation, distancing and mm. medical... Uh, it has been given to the workers and in addition the government had argued that this is a project of national importance and the deadline of November has to be maintained because this is with regard to the parliament building and the uh, Rajpath area. The court, uh, the court in its order has taken note of all of this and has said that this is a project of national importance, of vital public importance and therefore has uh, dismissed the petition. In addition, the court has also said that this seems to be a motivated petition, that there are uh, certain facts that are not there in this petition and that is why now a 1 lakh rupee fine has been imposed. Remember, this petition had asked for stay on construction claiming that workers were and uh, workers were uh, in danger of contracting COVID and not just for themselves but also for their family members and neighbours. Back to you. Tanisha, continue to stay with us right there. Delhi High Court says that the project is of national importance. There's no stay on the halt of construction work. In fact, the petitioner has been fi uh, fined uh, rupees 1 lakh. And uh, that's the latest coming in. Essentially, this means that the construction can go on status quo, according to the Delhi High Court. Days after Cyclone Yas pounded Bengal, politics over it is raging on. Mamta has written to Prime Minister Modi over centre's order to recall West Bengal Chief Secretary Alapan Bandubatyai. Mamta said the unilateral order was issued without consulting the state government, calling it a violator of All India Services rules. This is coming as 10 a.m. deadline for Alapan to report in Delhi North Block has ended. Sources say he is likely to defy the centre's directive and is set to join Mamta Banerjee, the state secretariat, in Nabana instead. If sources are to be believed, Alapan may get a role in TMC government. Alapan was recalled hours after controversy erupted over Mamta skipping Prime Minister's meeting on Cyclone Yas. Earlier, Bengal government asked for a three-month extension for the Chief Secretary that the centre cleared. So the West Bengal Chief Secretary is defiant. Let's get you the options before the centre at the moment. We are requesting the producers to pull that out on your screens for us to get you a better understanding of um, what it is. Mamta's letter to Prime Minister Modi, she says she's shocked. Absolutely. Let's get you those uh, uh, graphics here on your screens. West Bengal Chief Secretary remains defiant. These are the options before the centre. Stern reminder to Alapan to join a central post uh, tell Bengal government to relieve Alapan at the moment. That's the other option that uh, the centre has. Let's get you option number three. Show cause notice if he refuses to join. Number four, posting order or disciplinary actions. These are the four options before the central government. Indrajit is now joining us. Indrajit, we've walked our viewers through the four options before the central government given the fact that the chief secretary remains defiant. What next? What are you picking up from your sources? Well, it's a precarious situation, uh, Chaiti, at this point in time for the officer himself. Because remember, he continues to remain on state deputation right now. And unless he's relieved by the state government, there's no way that he can join the central deputation. And as we have been mentioning, the letter that has now been written by West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee, it categorically states what the situation is right now. Because uh, only on 24th of May, the central government had written to the state government uh, agreeing to the proposal of extending 
a three-month tenure for Alapan Bhattopadhyay, who retires officially today. So the central government had given a nod to the state government to extend his tenure for three more months. Now, within four days, that is on 28th of May in the evening, comes uh, this letter from the central government saying that Alapan Bhattopadhyay immediately needs to move back to Delhi. Uh, and that uh, also on the last day or last working day of his, uh, of his tenure. So that remains uh, a very sketchy situation right now because Mamta Banerjee says that, and, and she cites the rule book here, the IS uh, rules, where, where she says that any such decision needs to be done in consultation with the state government. As far as the center's previous move is concerned, where they had allowed three-month extension, that was done with due consultation with the state government because it was the state government's request. But this new order of recalling him to Delhi is a unilateral order. There was no consultation with the state government. And therefore, there is no question of releasing Alapon Bondepadhyay, the chief secretary, right now, because he's engaged in a very, very crucial job of uh, you know, tackling the pandemic here in the state. And that's precisely why the West Bengal government had sought a three-month extension uh, despite him retiring today. So Alapan Bondepadhyay, uh, as we can report to you right now, has just entered, just a short while back, uh, about 15 minutes back, he's entered the West Bengal State Secretary. So clearly, he's not reported at uh, North Block in New Delhi at 10 o'clock this morning. And this matter has been escalated to the level of the Chief Minister and the Prime Minister. With All West right, Bengal Indrajit, Chief we'll keep coming back to you for more on the story. China's role in designing the COVID virus has been exposed as per an explosive new UK study. Scientists in Britain claim that the virus was created in a lab in Wuhan and has no credible natural ancestor. British professor Angus Dagliesch and Norwegian scientist Dr. Bertha Sorensen have claimed that the virus was created by Chinese scientists who were working on a project in the Wuhan lab. According to the report, Chinese scientists took a natural coronavirus backbone found in Chinese cave bats, turned it into the deadly COVID-19. This is coming in after U.S. President Joe Biden ordered the intelligence agencies to submit a report on the origin of COVID-19 in the next three months. Biden directed the agency to report whether the virus came from an animal source or from a laboratory accident. Gaurav Savan joins us for the very latest. Gaurav, this is a, a, a very explosive study and this is something that nails the lives of China. And there's also somewhere uh, stamps what Dr. Anthony Fauci also has said to international media about the fact that he's not convinced that this uh, uh, COVID-19 has found natural ancestors. He seem, Even he doesn't seem to be convinced and now the chorus is growing against China. So what Dr. Anthony Fauci has now come around to saying is what two scientists, a professor in Britain and a Norwegian scientist, have concluded through a very explosive study, as you rightly point out. So these two say that there is no credible natural ancestor of COVID-19. And they are saying that this was a gain-of-function study going on at the Wuhan lab for about a year, where natural bat virus was spliced and then... Uh, you know, it was it it was a, there was a gain of function uh, uh, research done on it to ensure that it becomes far more infective, uh, and uh, that is how it spread. And then they tried to cover up the two scientists claim. Then there was a very elaborate cover up. Now it remains to be seen. Uh, you know, with this increased international pressure, whether the world is able to come around and tell China to open up the Wuhan lab in a transparent manner. Remember, China claims that it opened up the Wuhan lab to the World Health Organization. But WHO scientists have also said that they were not given original papers. They were only given summary of patients. And there was a very, the allegation is that there was a very elaborate cover-up. Now it remains to be seen whether a proper investigation is carried out. Because remember, Cheti, there are also 18 scientists from across different universities in the mm. world who've come together and said that this does not appear to be natural and that there needs to be an investigation. Absolutely, Gaurav. Thank you for getting us that report right there. My colleague Akshay Anand Gopal tells us about seven reasons why China now finds itself in the dock. 
Here's a breakdown of all the proof against China that's leading to the speculation about coronavirus being lab created. First, Wuhan lab staff had COVID symptoms before the pandemic based on US Intel Agency's report. Now, China had destroyed initial human samples of the virus, which made it impossible for detailed investigations so far. Now, the third reason there is all of the speculation is because of an influenza outbreak in China back in December 2019 itself. Also, China's bid to uh, silence domestic medical voices who've raised questions about the origins of the virus has also led to speculation that they're hiding something. China initially also covered up the existence of the virus. They simply did not highlight it to the authorities globally, and many questions have been raised about that as well. Access to Wuhan lab as well as information has been blocked time and again, even for the WHO, which has been trying to ensure fair investigation into the origins of this virus. Another reason is because of the fact that China has been unwilling to face an open and transparent global probe, something that other countries, including the United States, have raised. The need for China China's cooperation. Breaking news coming in. Supreme Court hearing class 12 board examinations case. Attorney General has requested Supreme Court to adjourn the matter. Supreme Court has asked why the decision to cancel class 12 examination last year cannot be continued this year. In case you are departing from this decision, please give us detailed reasons. That's the Supreme Court questioning the centre at the moment. Anisha Mathur, with all the details, is now going to be joining us for the very latest details. Anisha, what has the Supreme Court said? All right, we'll be getting uh, Anisha in just about a bit, but the centre uh, to Supreme Court adjourned the case till Thursday. Uh, and this is right when the Supreme Court has asked questions to the centre uh, in terms of why the decision to cancel Class 12 examination last year cannot be continued this year too and they want the detailed reasons for the same <clears throat> let's now take a look at the top five worst hit cases Tamil Nadu with 28,864 uh, cases uh, topping the charts right there which is followed by Karnataka at 20,378. This gets followed by Kerala at 19,894 cases. Then comes Maharashtra at 18,600 uh, cases. And finally, Andhra Pradesh at 13,400 cases. And these are the top five daily new cases data. Latest one till 31st May that we're bringing to you. After reeling under lockdown for over a month due to the deadly second wave of the coronavirus, the national capital has begun uh, unlocking from today in a phased fashion as daily COVID case tally continues downwards trend. The Ahmadmi Party government has allowed lifting of some curbs, allowing construction activities and functioning of factories, giving much needed respite to the daily wage earners. These activities are allowed with certain COVID restrictions. However, lockdown is going to remain in force till 7 June, restricting activities of the people. Meanwhile, Delhi has reported 946 new cases in the last 24 hours with 78 fresh deaths. This is the first time the case count has gone down below the 1,000 mark since 22nd of March. Cabinet positivity rate has gone down to 1.25 percent. Kejriwal has also warned that if COVID cases start rising, unlock exercise will have to be stopped. So be careful, mask up, follow all the social distancing norms and COVID protocols. There is a partial relaxation in the lockdown norms by Delhi government and hence the industrial area and construction activity will start from today. You can see those who are coming uh, for industrial activities at Patpagang industrial area right now, uh, lots of workers and uh, uh, who are coming uh, for their work. As you know, the industry is open. So, Rahat, eh? so, yeah, uh, so uh, these uh, people are coming for their work. Now, it was closed for you guys? Yes. Is it open today? Yes, it is open. So, how uh, will it be difficult for two months? बिल्कुल दूर काम धंधा नहीं है घर बैठे जा रहे हैं आप लोगों की क्या हालत थी सर अभी तो मैं मारुति सुजुकी में जॉब कर रहा था हमारा कांटेक्ट पूरा हो गया जॉब लेस था अब जॉब के लिए हम आज दिल्ली खुली है तो निकले हैं बाहर तो बीच में घर भी चले गए थे 
घर तो घर घर ही था मैं डेढ़ महीने से डेढ़ महीने से घर पे नहीं थे। आप लोगों को लगता है कि लॉकडाउन ने स्थिति थोड़ी गंभीर कर दी थी हाँ जी कर दिया बहुत ज्यादा सब जॉब लेस हो गए सबको निकाल लिया है कॉन्टेक्ट से तो अब नई नई नौकरी ढूंढनी पड़ेगी यस हाँ ढूंढ रहे हैं उसी के चक्कर में इट वॉज क्वाइट डिफिकल्ट टू रन देयर हाउस होल्ड बिकॉज दे आर द अर्निंग मेम्बर्स ऑफ देर फैमिली बट दे आर नॉट गेटिंग रेगुलर सैलरी ड्यू टू द लॉकडाउन एंड नाउ वेन द एक्टिविटीज विल स्टार्ट देन steadily slowly they will get their salaries and they the life will be back on track once again with camera person pradeep gupta skumar kunal for india today from delhi amidst the rise in covid cases in rural areas maharashtra government has extended the lockdown till 15th of june while also stating districts with a dip in cases will see ease in restrictions chief minister uddhav thakre in a review meeting also pointed out that cities including mumbai and districts with less than 10% positivity and occupancy of oxygen beds less than 40% will find lockdown norms relaxed essential shops will now be open from 7 am to 2 pm and delivery of non essential items through e commerce is going to be permitted Thakre also warned that the people against letting their guards down as the covid cases are still high in a few districts the state reported 18600 new cases 402 deaths in 24 hours uddhav also brought up the prediction of a third wave and said it will depend on people's behavior to keep it at bay a lockdown in maharashtra has been extended till 15th of june there will be a phase wise slow unlock but that too depends on the local bodies and the district administration depending on the covid positivity rate of the district which has to be less than 10% essential shops timing could be extended in this phase of unlock from 7 am to 2 pm and this can be also given to non essential shops but non essential shops will not be allowed to function on weekends as per the guideline given by the state department the important thing about shopping malls shopping centers will be that the decision will be taken by local bodies like bmc whether these shops and malls could be open e commerce services for non essential services which is still shut it could be open but that also depends on what is the case covid graph of the particular district because if unlock happens even phase wise and there is a rise seen in the district covid cases then again state government has given powers to the local bodies to put the entire district in the state of lockdown so it's a clear message that life will not be as it used to be before lockdown there will be a phased wise unlock that to depending on the covid graph of the particular district with camera person mangesh ambre mustafa sheik in mumbai for india today Breaking news coming in Supreme Court hearing class 12 board examination case attorney general requests the supreme court to adjourn the matter supreme court has asked the center why the decision to cancel class 12 examination like last year cannot be continued this year in case you are departing from this decision please give us detailed reasons this is the supreme court telling the center anisha is now joining us live anisha the center will now have to respond to the supreme court Well, yes, uh, the center has called a meeting tomorrow. In fact, uh, the ministry, uh, the education ministry, has called a meeting to discuss what will happen. to the class 12th and class 10th board exam remember last year even the class 12th board exams uh, the policy that was stated was that the last few exams were cancelled the people uh, the children who were not able to give those exams due to covid or due to the northeast delhi riots were given exemption and in fact they their results was declared declared on the basis of their pre board exams and their class test performances and now the supreme court has asked the same question that why is it that when we are in the same situation this year again uh, why is it that you cannot continue with last year's policy and what kind of policy changes are you making the attorney general kk venugopal of course has asked for time he has said that the meeting is been called tomorrow and he wants time to file a response now the hearing in the supreme court will be on thursday but in the next two days the government is likely to declare its policy as far as the class 12 exams are concerned that's it all right thanks anisha for getting us the latest details right there moving on now Congress spokesperson Supriya Shinde abused BJP national spokesperson Sambit Patra on Aaj Tak's popular debate program Takkar Shinde forgot she was sitting in a live show and called Patra a gutter worm here's a clip 
मैं छोटी सी एक बात कह के अपनी बात खत्म कर रही हूँ बोलने की आजादी सबको है लेकिन उसी बोलने की आजादी से जब हमारे देश में गांधी के देश में गोडसे के उपासक गोडसे की जय जयकार करते हैं उनको मोदी और शाह जी कैसे फॉलो करते हैं जरा मुझे बताइए उनके खिलाफ क्या एक्शन लिया जाता है क्या वो देशद्रोह नहीं है क्या वो राष्ट्र के खिलाफ द्रोह नहीं है उनके खिलाफ क्या एक्शन लिया जाता है उनको तो वेरी प्राउड टू बी फॉलोड बाय फलाना वेरी प्राउड टू बी फॉलोड बाय ढिमकाना अरे क्या तमाशा इस देश में भाई इस देश में लोगों की बोलने की आजादी स्वतंत्र पत्रकार इनकम टैक्स को अपना फ्रंटल बना लेना ये क्या तरीके है मेरे ब्लड प्रेशर की चिंता मत करो संबित पात्रा सवालों का जवाब दो परेशान मत हुआ करो सवालों से मैं कहा आलोचना करने पर आप अपनी एजेंसियां ठीक है फिगर्स कोर्ट करना आलोचना करने पर आप अपनी एजेंसियां उनके पीछे छोड़ देते हैं जो राजनीतिक प्रतिद्वंदी रहता है उसका आप मुकाबला करते हैं अपनी एजेंसियों के जरिए ठीक है प्लीज जवाब लेते हैं और सरकार की तरफ से ऐसे लोग जो गोडसे के भक्त हैं उनके आपके आपके जो सर्वोच्च लोग हैं उनको फॉलो करते हैं अरे अंजना जी आप तो मैं बोल रहा हूँ बाकी सबको छोड़ दीजिए ये हम दो भाई बहन तो हर दिन आपके डिबेट में आते हैं ना अरे आप हमारी लास्ट पांच डिबेट निकाल दीजिए टुच्ची कमीना पता नहीं क्या क्या शब्दों का प्रयोग इन्होंने हमारे प्रधानमंत्री और हमारे सरकार के लिए किया हुआ है क्या कर दिया हमने अपनी बहन के खिलाफ कुछ किया क्या कुछ नहीं किया और तो और इन्होंने तो भेजा था मनीष शंकर अयर को पाकिस्तान मोदी की सरकार को गिराना होगा अरे वो तो एंकर बेचारा वहां तरतर आ गया कि हम कैसे गिराएंगे मोदी की सरकार ना ना गिराना ही होगा मोदी की सरकार को क्या कर दिया मनीष शंकर अयर का कोई गिरफ्तारी कर दी मोदी मोदी जी ने मनीष शंकर अयर का अरे कुछ नहीं किया अंजना जी ये क्या बोल रहे हैं कि हमने किसी को फॉलो कर दिया ट्विटर इत्यादि पे मैं तो बार बार बोल रहा हूँ रविशंकर जी अभी दो दिन पहले आपके चैनल पे आके बोल के गए थे ये लोग ट्विटर को और ये जो प्लेटफॉर्म है उसको बचाने की कोशिश ना करें अगर हमारे देश में आप सामान बेचने आए हो हमारे देश में आप व्यवसाय करने आए हो तो हमारे देश के कानून को पालन करना पड़ेगा ये कांग्रेस पार्टी को अच्छा लगे कांग्रेस पार्टी को बुरा लगे इससे हमें कोई मतलब नहीं है हमारे देश के कानून को पालन करना पड़ेगा नंबर एक नंबर दो मैं यहाँ जानना चाहता हूँ क्यों एक सेकंड अंजना जी आप आ जाइएगा आप तो आ ही जाती है अभी रुक जाइए अभी रुक जाइए थोड़ी देर बाद अंजना जी अंजना जी क्या कारण है जो दो हजार पूरा कर ले पूरा कर ले सुप्रिया जी वो पूरा कर लो वो पूरा कर ले अंजना जी आप बोल रहे हैं देशद्रोह देशद्रोह क्या होता है मैं बताता हूँ देशद्रोह होता है जब चाइना के साथ डोकलाम स्टैंड ऑफ चल रहा हो और पूरा गांधी कुंबा चाइनीज टेंट के नीचे पकड़ा जाए रंगे हाथ पहले तो मना कर रहे थे कि हम तो है ही नहीं फिर फोटो जारी हो गई तो बोल रहे अच्छा 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 ठीक है हम ही है क्या कर रहे थे 2008 में मां बेटे जाके चाइना में हस्ताक्षर करके आते हैं कि पता नहीं कितने पैसे का आदान प्रदान होता है आज तक चाइना को बचाने में लगे हुए क्या कारण है मैं ये पूछता हूं वो होता है देशद्रोह मगर क्या हमने मां बेटे को या इनके किसी भी सदस्य को देशद्रोह में जेल में डाल दिया बिल्कुल नहीं आप षड्यंत्र करिए आप पाकिस्तान के साथ चाइना के साथ षड्यंत्र करिए हम बचाने वाले हैं देश को ना आप देश बेचिए आप देश बर्बाद करिए बचाएंगे हम जिसको कुदाल भी क्या है पता है फावड़ा भी क्या है पता है और सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक भी कैसे करना है यह भी पता है आजे ठीक है एक छोटा सा जवाब ले लेते हैं सुप्रिया जी से इस पर क्योंकि आप डायरेक्ट आरोप लगा रहे हैं जी मैं आ जाओ सुप्रिया जी अंजना जी मैं इसका जवाब जरूर दूंगी और जवाब उन लोगों को तो मैं जरूर सुनाऊंगी जो चीन का नाम नहीं ले पाते हैं डेपसांग से चीन पीछे हो गया इस बात का जवाब दीजिए सबने कहा था कि आर्मी ने बहुत बड़ी भड़त हासिल करी है ब्लैक टॉप कब्जा करके क्यों ब्लैक टॉप छोड़ दिया डेपसांग से चीन को निकाल नहीं पाए अट्ठारह बार मिलकर गलबैया महाबल्लीपुरम से लेकर साबरमती तक करते रहे मोदी जी क्या मतलब था इन सब मीटिंग्स का सबसे ज्यादा दौड़ दौड़ कर क्यों जाते थे चीन क्या रिश्ता है चाइना के साथ वो केमिस्ट्री और आत्मीयता क्या थी हमारे देश को उसका खामियाजा हमारी भूभागी अखंडता को उसका खामियाजा भुगतना पड़ रहा है यह मैं पूछना चाहती हूं और मेरी परवरिश ऐसी नहीं है कि मैं इतने गंदे शब्दों का प्रयोग करूं ये आपकी आईटी सेल आप जैसे प्रवक्ताओं और आपके मन का काम है कि हमारे भी कहा था, था, कुछ भी कहा था हम एक गरिमा में पार्टी है और एक गरिमा में दो लाइन में जवाब नहीं हूं और इसलिए नहीं करती है दिखाती है आपकी सरकार आंकड़ों पर बात कर सकी है तो करिए बोलने नहीं देंगे लास्ट
Well, this is what the political discourse has come down to. We got you a snippet of that. For, with that, it's a wrap for me, Chaiti Narula, on this bulletin. For further news and updates, don't forget to log on to indiatoday.in or go ahead and download our app. You are watching India Today. More news and updates, log on to indiatoday.in and download the India Today app now. updates log on to indiatoday.in and download the india today app now india's most trusted college ranking is back as per mtra's survey among ug students 84 percent recommend india today best colleges rankings make the right choice subscribe now india today best colleges survey 2021 coming soon You are watching.